Hey guys, so this video is on atomic structure and symbolism. So we know what we know at this point is that an atom consists of a nucleus in which um, most of the mass and all the positive charge resides, and outside of the nucleus, which is where the electrons are, which take up almost all of the volume, but very little of the mass. Um, it ends up that there was some, there were some more experiments after the ones we talked about where they figured out that there were other th there were um, particles other than protons in the nucleus. Now these particles had about the same mass as the proton, but they had they had no no electric charge. They were electrically neutral, so they are called neutrons. Um, so we know that we have the nucleus um, where there are protons and neutrons, almost all the mass, very little volume. And outside of the nucleus, which is where the electrons are, which is almost all of the volume, very little of the mass. To give you an idea of the scale we're talking about, um, the diameter of a nucleus is about oh, um, 10 to the minus 15th meters. And the diameter of an atom is about 10 to the minus 10th meters. Um, that means that the diameter of an atom is about 10,000 times that of the nucleus. It's huge. To give you an idea of that scale, um, if you imagine a professional sports stadium, soccer, football, baseball, what have you, you, put a grape right in the middle of it, that would be relatively about the size of the nucleus if the whole stadium um, were, the, were the atom. Um, so some units that we use to talk about things on this scale. Um, <clears throat> for mass, we use something called the atomic mass unit, or AMUs, um, which is the same as a Dalton. Um, DA stands for Dalton. Sometimes we abbreviate AMUs, just use. All the same thing. And 1 AMU is 1.6605 times 10 to the minus 24th grams. The mass of a proton, this symbol P plus is a symbol for a proton, um, is 1.0073 AMUs. Um, symbol for a neutron is this right here, N with a zero. Um, the mass of a neutron is 1.0087 AMUs. So really close, but not exactly the same mass as a proton. And an electron, this is a symbol for an electron, E minus, um, has a mass of 0 0.0055 AMUs. In terms of length, it ends up that, uh, it, although it's not an SI unit, um, it's still a very convenient unit to use. An angstrom, this A with a circle on top of it, is called an angstrom. And that's equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 10th meters. Over here, none of these numbers are exact. This is exact. Um, in terms of charge, an electron charge is 1.602, at least to four sig figs, which is good for what we do here, times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. So the charge on a proton is positive 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs, and the charge on an electron is negative 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. Now because, you guys, the charge on an electron and that on a proton are exactly the same magnitude but opposite, char um, opposite signs, that means if we have the same number of electrons in an atom as we do protons, the total charge, we add up all the charges, is equal to zero. It's electrically neutral. Um, <clears throat> isotopes. Um, the definition of an isotope, or of isotopes, it's a relationship, is that there are, they are atoms that have the same number of protons as each other, but different numbers of neutrons. Now it ends up that the one and only thing that determines which element any given atom is, is how many protons are in its nucleus. Everything else can change and it can still be the same element, um, but the number of protons has to stay the same. Um, so for example, any atom in the universe that has six protons in its nucleus is an atom of carbon, regardless of how many neutrons or electrons it has. Um, <clears throat> the symbol for an isotope takes this form right here, guys. The E stands for the symbol of the element that we read right off the periodic table. Um, so C for carbon or what have you. Um, A is the mass number, and that's equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Z is the atomic number, and that's equal to the number of protons. Um, the way we say the name of an isotope um, is we say the name of the element and then the mass number. So mercury 200, mercury 201. Um, so well, the relationship between these two, mercury 200 and mercury 201, for example, is that they are isotopes of each other. Because they have different mass numbers, they have different numbers of neutrons. Because they're the same element, they have to have the same number of protons. Um, a lot of times, you guys, we don't write the, the atomic number down here because if it's mercury, it has to have um, as the number of neutrons that, oh, excuse me, the number of protons that mercury has, 80. Right? So 
Anytime any element has 80 protons, it's an atom of mercury. Or if we see HG, which stands for mercury, we know that it has 80 protons. Um, so for example, tantalum 181. Um, here's what we know about it. Um, because it's tantalum, it, we can either look at the atomic number if we see it here, if it's written, or if it's not, if it's like this over here. We just look at the periodic table. We see that tantalum has 73 protons. Um, the number of neutrons is just the mass number minus the atomic number. So 181 minus 73 tells us there are 108 neutrons in tantalum 181. And because there, this is an, elect, um, an electrically neutral atom, how do we know that? Well, um, if it's not electrically neutral, we'll see this in a moment, then, then it's an ion, and it will have a charge as a superscript to the right of it. There's no superscript to the right. That means it has zero charge, it's electri electrically neutral, and we know we have the same number of electrons as protons, in this case, 73 electrons. So an ion um, is an atom or a compound that has a net, an overall electric charge. Um, the only way this can happen is by moving around electrons. You can either gain electrons or lose electrons. Um, it's a lot harder to um, change the number of protons, and if we do that, we change what element it is. So that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about only moving around electrons. So if an atom um, loses electrons, it has less negative charges then it does positive charges, so overall it has a net positive charge and it's called a cation. If that atom gains electrons, it has more electrons, more negative charges, than it does positive charges, protons, um, and it has a net negative charge and it's called an anion. Um, when we have ions, we write the charge as a superscript to the right of the, the element symbol. For example here, um, gold 3. This, has, this is gold. AU is gold. The 3 plus tells us that relative to a neutral atom of gold, this ion has three fewer electrons. It lost three electrons because it has a total of three positive charges. This is potassium. Um, we don't write the one, it's implied. Potassium with a plus one charge means it lost one electron. Um, this is the oxide ion, an oxygen atom with two extra electrons. We know it has two electrons because it has a negative two charge. It gained two electrons. And once more, we don't write the one. This is the bromide ion. It has one extra electron compared to a neutral bromine atom. Average atomic mass. So it ends up that most elements that we know of um, in their natural form have more than one isotope that exists naturally. Um, and another thing uh, is that it ends up that no matter where we get a sample of that element, it always has the same ratio of isotopes. For example, if I were to take a handful of carbon that I found in Modesto and compare it to a handful of carbon that I found over in Russia, it would have the same ratio of the isotopes in that carbon, the same percent of each isotope. Um, because of that, we can calculate the average atomic mass. This is a weighted average um, for any element if we know the makeup, how, what fraction or what percent of each isotope is in that, that element, and the mass of each element. So this formula up here, guys, this AAM stands for average atomic mass, and it says that the average atomic mass is a sum, this sigma is a sum, of each fraction times each mass of each isotope. So for example, you know, if there's two isotopes, it would be the fraction of the first times its mass plus the fraction of the second times its mass. And if there were three, it would be plus F3, M3. Here the fractions are just a percent um, divided by 100. So if it's 17% of one isotope, 17 over, over 100 is 0.17. That would be the fraction for that, that isotope. Um, because we know that the percents all have to add up to be 100%, the fractions all have to add up to be equal to 1. And that's useful. So let's do a, do a couple of examples here. Um, so it ends up magnesium has three naturally occurring isotopes and they each have these masses right here, 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 and these percent abundances. Let's calculate the average atomic mass of magnesium. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna use this formula up here. We're gonna plug right into it. So that's what I've done here. What, what I've done also, you guys, is I've taken the percents that were given, converted them to fractions by dividing by 100. So 78.99% becomes 0.7899. So so on. So if we do this one step at a time, because this is a combined operation and we need to keep track of sig figs, 
we get four sig figs. It ends up from each of these, but the first multiplication gives us two past the decimal, the other is three past. So in our answer, we're only allowed to write two past the decimal, but we end up with, and you should check this, um, 24.31 AMUs, at least a two past the decimal. Um, <clears throat> now, a couple things about this, guys. First, there is no single atom of magnesium that exists that has a mass of 24.31 AMUs. Um, they have, the isotopes have these masses up here. This is a weighted average of the, the masses of each of the isotopes. The next thing is that every periodic table you see will have the average atomic mass for that element underneath the symbol for that element. If you go look up on a periodic table Mg, which is magnesium, it'll probably say like 24.305. And that's going to be really useful for us to know. Another example with this calculation, guys, is um, this right here. So if you think about it, each of those symbols in the formula is, is a, a variable. and We can solve for any one of these if we know the others. Um, in this case, um, all we're told is that there's two naturally occurring isotopes, and these are their masses right here. And we want to calculate the fractional abundance of each. What fraction is boron 10 and what fraction is boron, boron 11? Um, so what we're going to do, okay, first, if we can find the fractional abundances, um, we want to find the percent abundances. If we can find the fractional abundances, just multiply by 100 to get the percent abundances. Um, and so we have two, at this point, two unknowns, the fractional abundance of boron 10 and that of boron 11. If we call the fractional abundance of boron 10 x, that of boron 11 y, we can write this. The average atomic mass for boron is x times the mass of boron 10 plus y times the mass of boron 11. But remember, guys, the sum of the fractions have to equal 1. In this case, there's just two fractions, so we can say x plus y is equal to 1, or y is equal to 1 minus x. Now with that, we can substitute into this equation so that we only have one unknown. So we can write um, the average atomic mass of boron, which by the way, where I got this number, guys, right here, the 10.811, is I just looked on a periodic table. And you should know that's where you go to find the average atomic mass. Knowing what element it is, you can look that up. Um, so now I have an equation with only one unknown, x. Um, I solved it. What you guys should do is you should, you know, pause the video, do the work yourself, make sure you get the same answers I do, okay? And I got x is 0.199. That means I'll plug in up here, 1 minus x, which is y, is 0 0.8009. Now, I know it doesn't look like these add up to 1, but that's because what I did is I did not round. I used every digit in my calculator, and if you do that, you'll see you get these numbers right here. That's not 0.801, it's, you know, it, around, it, it ends up being this number. And so, to get the percents, we just multiply by 100. So 19.9% boron 10, 80.1% boron 11. So there I have rounded because we're finished the calculation. And the last thing we're going to talk about here, guys, is chemical formulas. So a chemical formula gives you information about that compound. Um, these are examples of chemical formulas. Um, and what it says is each of the subscripts tells you that there's that many of whatever is immediately to the left of that subscript. So this 2 means that in one of these compounds there are two atoms of phosphorus, five atoms of oxygen. This is carbon dioxide, and we don't write the ones, they're implied, so this says there's one atom of carbon, two atoms of oxygen, and one molecule of carbon dioxide. Now, there's different ways of writing formulas. Um, these are all the same, well, they, they can be the same compounds, C2H4O2. Um, could be a couple of different compounds, but one compound it could be is um, CH3CO2H. This form here, guys, gives you a little bit more information about how the atoms are attached to each other. Um, don't worry about that so much for now. We'll get into that when we do Lewis structures. But this gives us more information as, you know, this is basically the same right here. They're all the same thing. This is what we call um, a Lewis structure, and it gives us even some more information. And don't really worry about that right now, guys. We'll, we'll learn how to draw these later in the course. Um, an empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of the atoms that make up a compound. For example, um, the formula for benzene is C6H6. The simplest whole number ratio is 1 to 1, so the empirical formula for C6H6 would be CH. Now guys, that CH is the empirical formula for probably hundreds of different, at least, of different compounds. So it's not unique to that compound, but it does give us, give us some information. Whereas a molecular, as opposed to empirical formula, a molecular formula tells you actually how many atoms 
of each element there are. So, um, yeah, this would be a molecular formula. The empirical formula for this, by the way, would be CH2O. There we go.